Hey everybody, this is Comics on TV. I'm Josh. And I'm Mike. And we're reviewing Gotham for the week. The episode is The Anvil and the Hammer. Yeah, it was. And we finally get some conclusions to some of these story threads that's Yeah, there's been going a lot of on. things going on in this episode, but it uh, opens up with uh, the, the ogre, ogre and Barbara. Barbara. And Barbara? he's like, you yeah. ain't leaving. <laughs> we, see it, we see an eerie reminder of uh, previous episodes when he decides to have breakfast with his lucky lady of the night, and they want to leave. Yeah, well, the last episode ended with him showing his magical sex room, yeah. and apparently she Why didn't get freaked out. Why don't they for breakfast after the magical sex room? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, wow. Well, well, it went out, banged it out for the whole night, and then uh, she comes back down. It's like, we know what this was. It's basically telling him that it's, he's just a booty call to her. He's like, yeah, I mean, this is not going to go anywhere. But then he becomes full ogre on her and puts a bag over her head, and thus his prisoner. What's great and interesting is that he actually really likes Barbara. He wants to yeah, actually weird be with her. He, he, he actually feels like he's in love with her. She's that messed up she's that she's attracting so, psychopaths now, and they're really digging her. Yeah. Um, so there's that part of the episode. Also, you get Riddler. Riddler comes in uh, with his trunks into the police station. Don't literally, don't, don't. like like I'm going to the Bahamas. <laughs> and nobody thinks anything <laughs> of it. Nobody says you know, anything. Suitcases. And it's pieces of the detective he has killed the night before. He works in the morgue at the police station. <laughs> what is he bringing dead bodies in the door for? I picked this one up, guys. Don't worry. About yeah, it. yeah. Nah, yeah. So he's going to go and uh, dissolve this guy in some acid. Uh, you get... Uh, Even Miss Kringle. Kringle's kind of... Yeah. Mrs. Kringle's like... Yeah. Yeah. Kringle comes in. She's like, oh my God, what's that? He's like, oh, you know, it was an ax, uh, ass accident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Accidental death in a sheet metal factory. Yeah. So she it's sees right that. Right there. Right there. No questions. <laughs> um, he just uh, also Riddler decides to uh, write... Uh, Kringle a letter from the dead detective saying that he's not coming back. Yeah, and that was nice of him. Well, I'd say it's jumping around, yeah. but it's funny. He's like, read between the lines, and when he goes and puts the thing away, the first letter of each sentence spells Nigma, which is kind of, you know, typical Riddler kind of stuff. Yeah. Speaking um, of other Batman villains, we have the Penguin, and his plan has come together. Yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. he goes to uh, have the murder set up at Lydia's restaurant of... One Don Maroney. Yeah, and he figured out that every time one of Don's crew members gets out of jail, it, they have to have the ceremonial dinner there. Yeah, at Lydia's. So this, in this case, it's Tommy Bones. And Tommy Bones has been up the river for about nine years. He comes out. Maroney's happy to see him. And, of course, the henchman that Penguin puts on the case comes through the door as they've already planted two guns or in like the restaurant. Or I like to call the fall guy. Yeah, <laughs> he planted two. Uh, Butch plants two guns earlier in the episode just to back up a little bit. One under a bar, one behind a jukebox, and the guys come in, they're like, oh, you know, they send the message that not Penguin is telling it. And you, I kind of got it from this. He said, Falcone, it was a hard decision for him to make to kill you, and goes to shoot him, and the firing pins are not in either of the guns. They get laid out, and it, the, it's a bad and situation. And the explanation was pitch perfect. I mean, he literally had his face where he's just almost laughing. Because Butch tells him, he's like, it went bad. We got to get the hell out yeah, of town. Yeah, Butch is like, oh, oh you and he's like, little Wait. genius. He goes, yeah, yeah, I took the firing pins out before he did it. And Penguin's like, I could have Don Maroney dead now. Yeah, because I'd rather not be under Falcone's thumb. And you're like, wow, the guy is awesome. <laughs> Another shining point of this episode is, of course, Harvey, because Harvey's amazing. But his little side adventure was oh, yeah. glorious. Yeah, because the ogre apparently has been a frequent member of what's called the Fox Glove. And what it is is basically a secret sex society that moves around, and you have to be invited in. It's a little VIP kind of deal. So Harvey gets selected, of course, by Jim to do this. And Harvey's like, I got no problem with it. He goes, I have you know, a few Italian suits that fell off the evidence. Yeah, he has no problem going to the sex club. <laughs> yeah. So Harvey's kind of looking around. And it's weird. Weird sex stuff too. It's yeah, like, and, and, guys, and, a large baby getting fed. His People expression when, when when they saw what was going on stage. <laughs> especially oh, hell like, no. oh no! <laughs> especially you guys. He goes to GCPD. Yeah, it was fantastic. Finds another girl, Sally. Oh, hey, did he pull up his badge? GCPD. <laughs> yeah, so it finds a girl, Sally. There, it's wearing half a mask. You think it's just part of the decor? No, but she's got a large slice in her face from dealing with the ogre before. He actually let her go because it was nine years ago and he's been doing this for about that long. Maybe it was one of the first people he didn't have enough guts to really go through with it, let her go. So she tips him off a little bit. Jim and Harvey find ogre's apartment and who calls the apartment but the ogre himself. Yep, and not to skip to the uh, end with the ogre just yet, I'm gonna talk about Bruce a little bit because he went to Wayne Industries trying to use that little key he just That's got made. That's him stole. 
But it was a setup all along. Yeah, it's an empty safe. Who'd have thought? And Bundersaw's like, ah. Bundersaw's like, your father, your grandfather, they were all in on this. He was very patient. You're gonna figure you're gonna figure it out one day. You're just a child now. He offers him a cookie. He <laughs> might as well just smack the kid in the face and hell have a cookie. Bitch. Like, and, he, and, like, and, he, and he calls for Lucius Fox to come and escort him out. Yeah, so the introduction of Lucius Fox was cool because he's like, here's a junior executive at Wayne uh, Industry or uh, and Enterprises or whatever, and says, this is Lu Lucius Fox. So it's like, oh, we get the introduction yeah. to him. So that was pretty cool. And he's t basically saying that all of his past family members knew about this. You're just getting to talk younger. Yeah. And that they were corrupt is what Bunner's Law is saying. And they know about all the... Uh, Crappy stuff yeah. that Wayne does behind the scenes, basically. Crazy things. Now we're at the ogre part. Crazy thing with ogre. Him and Barbara with their twisted relationship. He doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't want to die. And he's like, "Tell me, tell me who he's I like, can I've kill. Gotta kill. I gotta someone. kill somebody. It's be you. And when you find out who she's gonna kill, you think it's gonna like, be like Lee Tompkins? Yeah, somebody. Or somebody yeah. But it's her parents just sitting there sniveling on the next scene, going, "No, what are Jim you doing?" Jim figures here? it out when he calls the place, and he's like, "Wait, they're going over a bridge, going upstate, because that's where Barbara's parents are." Yeah. And sure, shit, they get up there, and. He has killed both their parents. Barbara's in there, like in this catatonic kind of face, like, "What are you doing?" And in a very intense scene, too. Especially, it was when... it was really cool. And what's up, Jim Gordon, with the ultimate badass fight? There grabs the blade of Ogre. Of Ogre. He's like this, like <laughs> goes through his hand, but gets up. Ogre takes Barbara captive and holds him right up to her. Uh, yeah, he's gonna right slash her, her throat. And pretty much when he he shot him. You literally see, they, they didn't have a knife just fall to the side. It cut her a little I, bit at I least. was thinking it was going to be a two for one. Yeah. I think we're just gonna, <laughs> we thought she it was going to be a two for one, but it wasn't. So Barbara lives to see another day. But yeah, but she, Harvey's the one distracted the ogre, so yeah, it kind of turns, yeah. and then Jim's like, boom, one through the top, man, just right through it. And Great shooting, Next Jim. week, there was no fish this week, so of course it, it's not. all going to be about her next week, whatever. I mean, it's great man. she's not in the episode, but it's like, is she going to be the, no, she's not dead yet. What'd you guys think? Yeah, tell us. Comment you know, at the bottom, please. Like us on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up. Check us out on Twitter at the Real Comic Wow. Oh yeah, and go on uh, the Snapchat thing. Yeah, yeah. Comic Wow guys. Go to YouTube. We gotta put subscribe. some stuff up. Yeah. Also check us out on Vimeo as well. Yeah, go to ComicWow.com. Post some things. Mm -hmm. Connect with your fellow comic. We person. see that you guys are commenting a lot, and we love that. Please comment on this video. Yeah, comment on the other ones and win some stuff. Yeah, win it. See you.